Well, good morning, my friends. Your old pal, Jordan the Lion. Well, I know what I'm gonna do today for the vlog. It's just not gonna happen till later because I'm actually running a few errands today and I'm gonna be over in that neighborhood. When I realized I was gonna be over there, I said, you know, last time I was over there, I saw this one thing and I didn't know anything about it. So today is what I'm gonna do the vlog on. So Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. And he's all jazzed because he knows on my way to do that, we've already made arrangements for him to go spend the night and play with Pollyanna. So he's all excited because he's going to Pollyanna's house. Look at the tail go when you say Pollyanna. So I woke up today with a text message from Michael and Michael had never ever asked me for a favor sent me a message and said some of his good friends from Sweden were in town. I wanted to know if I could make something happen for them to get to do while they were here. And like I said, since he never asked for anything, put the wheels in motion, made some calls, and we got it to happen. So I'll tell you what we're gonna do. It's actually gonna happen in uh, like two days, so it's gonna be a fun time. I've gotten to do it before, but we learned this time, after making the call, how to get the most out of it. So this is gonna be a great night. I was hoping to swing by Dearly Departed today because I have some stuff for Scott Michaels, but I uh, haven't been able to get a response through text today, so I'm not sure if we'll do that or not. He has something for me too, actually. All right, well, I just dropped my car off because uh, I was noticing there's a nail in my new tire, so I need to get it patched. And uh, when I was getting an oil change the other day, they said that my uh, CV boot had had broken so I needed to get that replaced and the guy over here charges me half of what they charge where I got my oil change done. So I'm actually gonna walk over to Hollywood Forever Cemetery over here and uh, I wanna ask them if I could request to interview the owner of Hollywood Forever. Um, I was originally gonna go over and visit my buddy Scott Michaels like I mentioned a little bit ago and I got a text message from him a little bit ago. Oh boy, he, uh, he lost his puppy last night. He, uh, he had to say goodbye to his puppy, unfortunately, well, his dog, and uh, yeah, he just said he's going to hang at home, and I don't blame him. As a, as a dog parent, I, uh, I rue the day someday that I may have to go through that, or I, you know, I'll probably have to go through that. You never know. Old Joster may outlive me. So if you're curious why I want to interview him, one of the things that I like about the cemetery is that... I keep stumbling upon different stories where the guy who owns Hollywood Forever Now has went out of his way, like I said, to do things that were kind of uncustomary from before. Like originally Hattie McDaniel, who was in Gone with the Wind, played Mammy, she originally requested to be buried here, but the former owners didn't allow um, anyone that wasn't white to be buried here. So when the new owner uh, bought this place, I believe in like 2000, he extended the olive branch to the family and said that he would pay to have her moved and brought over here if they if they were interested and they in the end declined they didn't want to disturb her remains but they they did have a memorial put here one of the people who organizes the Valentino Memorial they made a special um, they gave him a special spot in the cemetery kind of close to where they have those and it's actually thanks to this guy they keep doing the Hollywood Forever um, Valentino Memorial he, he's been a big fan and proponent of keeping that tradition alive so it's things like that I just want to talk to him like where his love for this and where he, you know, he became interested in keeping um, the class alive here. That, those are the kind of things I want to talk to him about. So what I'm thinking of vlogging today is I'm going to go over to North Hollywood and they have a coffee shop that's shaped like an old train station. Sure enough, it's because it was an old train station. So that's what we're going to take a look at today. Commune yoga do more yoga it's good for you never heard of it this is pretty much a about a year-long project that's been going on so they've just been blocking off all the streets and now I'm noticing more and more construction signs in the area for like old buildings that they're gonna tear down so this is kind of becoming the soundtrack to living in Los Angeles and particularly Hollywood is just hearing this stuff six days a week. All right, we're taking this guy over to Tailwaggers. No. <laughs> Hi, boo boo. What's you going on? Hey, little boy, little boy. Who said you could be so damn adorable? <laughs> the angels up above. Yes, they did. 
You had plenty. <laughs> you had plenty. Look at you. You're going to your girlfriend's house anyway, Casanova. You go with your girls. Well, I just went and picked up my car, and uh, well, a couple things. Um, I think I am just. I think I'm just tired of dealing with the car. So, I um. I've been thinking today, I'm like, what are my options? I don't want to take on a huge car payment because I don't drive it all that much. And uh, so I started thinking, I called my grandpa and I said, you know what? I had jokingly said to Michael, hey, I'm going to buy your car off you when you get rid of this. And I know he's got a child coming. So I went ahead and sent Michael a text and I said, hey, if you think about selling your car, let me know first because I'll just buy it because I know Michael's kept his car, you know, in perfect condition, always taking care of and everything. And he wrote back and said, actually, I'm thinking of getting rid of it at the end of the summer. So I'll probably just buy Michael's car and be done with it and have a reliable car. <sighs> It'll be nice. So as I was picking up my car, I got a text message from Cece, Cece Parsons. And she said, hey, I'm in Austin. I'm hanging out with my mom. If you guys saw my Graham Parsons vlog, her mom was Graham Parsons' wife. It was his first wife. And, um, and she said, hey, remember we were talking and you had a ton of questions? Start firing away. Start texting me questions and I'll ask her. So I sent like probably 10 questions right off the bat. And uh, she writes me back one big long response and then says, this is crazy. I'm just going to call you. So she calls me, puts me on speakerphone with her and her mom, and then just lets me ask her mom all these questions. And sometime I am going to, uh, next time Cece's back in town, her and I are going to sit down and we're going to do a little vlog together and we're going to talk about that conversation because um, I got to ask a lot of really in-depth questions about Graham, what um, things that I had wondered about, things where I thought I where I thought his career would go, what I thought his goals were, and she, basically we were on the phone for about 15-20 minutes asking questions and at the end she said, well it was very nice meeting you. Graham would have liked you. He really would have liked your spirit. And I said, thank you very much. That's a true honor. So. Pretty cool. She gave me some uh, house addresses where he lived here, the years that he lived there, why he lived there, things like that. So uh, yeah, it was pretty interesting. You just never know what's going to happen from day to day. And one of the things I asked her, I said, did Graham stay in room eight a, lo a lot or how often was he out there? She said he went out to Joshua Tree usually about once a month. And she said it wasn't that particular room. It was like whatever room that was available there he would stay in, but he liked, she said he liked that particular inn because he felt like he was on Mars. That place reminded him of being on Mars. And what she also told me was that she knows the name of the person who was in room two that night. Remember when I told you the story that um, there was a report that the person who was in room two had given Graham an injection or offered him an injection and he took it and that was the... Uh, that was the final morphine that mixed with all the alcohol he had that killed him. She was actually able to tell me that the name, the full name, I'm not going to say it on here, but she did say it was somebody that Graham knew from high school that was out there. So it wasn't just a unknown person. It was actually somebody that he knew that gave him that. And they've never been named and they've never been prosecuted. But that's, um, yeah. Pretty interesting what one trip out to Joshua Tree has led to when it comes to my fascination with the Graham Parsons story and saga. And we're gonna get you ready, my friend, because in about 30 minutes, you're going to Pollyanna's house. Look at that tail. You're going to Pollyanna's today, buddy. Thanks for sticking with me, Ja. Thanks for hanging in there. It's been kind of a weird day for us, right? We're gonna drop off Ja over at Pollyanna's house now. This is actually gonna work out perfect because he's gonna spend the night and uh, Kevin and I are going to go hit Bakersfield tomorrow. There's Alan Ladd's Tiny's right there. We're pretty close to our destination. Well, right here is what we came to look at today. Some call it the Lancashire Depot. Some know it as the Southern Pacific Electric Red Line Station. It's been all of those things. This is actually one of the only surviving original train stops, train depots from the 19th century. This was built in 1895 and it was uh, originally it was kind of one of those um, trafficking points where they would send out produce from the North Hollywood Burbank area and they did that for about 10 years from the time it was constructed and then it was sold to what was known as the Pacific 
rail cars. If you remember all those cable cars I've shown in the past that used to go up and down these streets, this was one of those stops for like 40 years. And then for whatever reason, they quit using it as that and it just became like a building supply store, almost like your, like your orchard supply type place. It was called Hendrix. And then go, lo and behold, when they quit using it, it was still owned by the transportation department. It always, always has been. It was just being leased out. They couldn't really figure out what they wanted to go in there next. So for 30 years, nothing went in there. Can you believe it? For 30 years, nothing sat here. So then finally they decided, well, we have this property. We have to do something with it. So they went through and restored it, the whole thing. Um, it's about as original as you can get, except for, you know, they had to do some structural maintenance. They had to reinforce like the ceilings and any of the, the windows that obviously would have been busted out by vandals or whatever around here. They had to go and replace that kind of stuff too. But otherwise, this is as original of a structure as you can find and as it said online, one of the few structures from the 19th century that has lasted here in the San Fernando Valley. So they actually on the other side have a kind of a transportation point where the, uh, that's where the Metro Rail is now, right on the other side of here. So now this has actually been leased out to a coffee shop. And so all the people that are taking the Metro and everything now use this as a coffee shop as opposed to when it started, it would have been like an office and, um, and like a, you know, just a, a transportation hub for signing paperwork and sending fruit and produce on its way. Now kind of cool, North Hollywood always does this. We seem to find that all the time, every time we come over here to do any kind of vlog where they do a little rundown of the story here. So here's an older picture and you can tell it looks pretty similar to the way it did. I mean, <laughs> pretty much exactly the same. Like I said, they even went as far as, like I said, matching all the paint when they went to, uh, to restore this for its reopening. And it was really recent, it was just 2017. So it says, laying tracks and a foundation for the future. Land is the secret to Cal Southern California's prosperity, but it isn't worth much without a way to move the goods and services it generates. This modest wooden building on a small parcel of land is a portal to the history of how San Fernando Valley grew and prospered. The Lancashire Depot got, laid the foundation for the Metropolitan Transportation Authority here. The depot is a link from past to future, a community center and museum to underpinnings of the valley. Rocks that built the Los Angeles Harbor passed through here. Fruit grown in the valley was piled here in crates and being shipped around the country. And in 1914, Cecil B. DeMille and his film crew stopped here on their way north to shoot the seminal film, The Squaw Man. And there it's being used in, that looks like what? The teens? So yeah, 1919. Let's go take a look. Let's see what kind of museum they have inside there. And then this photo is commemorating it when it changed over to becoming the, uh, the red car depot, as you can see here. Took people from the valley and downtown a lot cheaper and faster. 40 cents round trip and 45 minutes each way. Any kind of throwback to the past is always great in my book. You guys know that. Check that out. Doesn't that look great? I'm really surprised it's even here. Like I said, for years you would come to North Hollywood and this they were doing nothing with it. Now they finally found a use. Hello. No llamas. Yeah, it's uh, pretty original. I don't see much of a museum, but I don't know. It's pretty cool. Just take a look at it at least, you know. See what it used to look like. Coffee mill. It's kind of crazy that now the transportation still is going by there after all these years. Isn't that nuts? This is what the outdoor... Uh, coffee patio looks like. It's pretty good actually. Oh, that's actually a coffee mill I just noticed. You can see the uh, the beans and everything and they're getting swirled around. You can only imagine what was uh, done right here, right? Was that a ticket booth at one point? What was that? Never know. Now one of the improvements that they did do when they did the whole renovation 
was that that chimney was missing. They noticed from old pictures that, that chimney was missing, so they actually reconstructed that chimney, and uh, and instead of like replacing the window frames, even if they were kind of harder to find because they were an older style, they just chose to have them uh, replaced instead. Or I mean, they would, you know, they had the the glass custom made as opposed to switching to a different type of framing or anything like that. I would assume this is on the National Registry of historic places for this area, but I honestly didn't see a sign anywhere for it. Chalk this up to one of the cooler places you can have coffee in this town if you're coming through. Pretty cool. Well, good night, my friends. I went out and watched some basketball with my friends, and then I uh, went and had tacos with Adam the Woo, came home, and I've been researching some things I want to do next week. I told you I'm going to take a little bit of a road trip next week, so just been looking and trying to push a little beyond the borders of things that I already know that are there and I've just been kind of like looking to dig deeper to see if there's anything cool that I can find to make this trip just even cooler so that's basically what I've been doing all night and I have a little secret I'm going to tell you guys about sometime um, something Cece and I were talking about that we're going to try and work together on and uh, who knows it could be very interesting so anyway I have a big plan um, we're going to take my pal Kevin up to Bakersfield tomorrow. He's always wanted to go to Buck Owens Crystal Palace, but we're actually going to go hit some stuff along the way and check out some pretty cool places that I've never got to go to. So I figured, you know what? Guys wanted to go forever. Gives me an excuse to go vlog some more places up there. So let's do it. It's always fun to see your friends happy. And I mean, he's one of the few people I know that digs country music the same way I do for the same crazy reason. So... It's going to be cool to see his expression when he walks into the great Buck Owens Crystal Palace. So come back and see us tomorrow. We have a great day planned. Hope you guys enjoyed today. Have a great night. We'll see you all then. Goodbye.